Hey guys, I'm the Broken Puppet and welcome back to my drawing tutorials. Today I'll be going to draw this really awesome Samurai Tiger. It's going to be that exact image you just saw there. So we're going to start off with a circle like this, in the centre. It's going to be nice and parallel for most of it, that's symmetric, with a few little bits that ain't. A little circle at the bottom, just like so, and two lines just curving up from the centre of that. Draw another sort of oval curve shape just in the centre here. It's going to be like his nose bit kind of area. Off the top of that, just a little bit of the inside, just draw a circle and then do two curves on the outside, just kind of start building up the cheek area. We're just trying to build up his form at this point. We're trying to put everything in a rough place and refine it. A curved rectangle just above the eyes, it's going to be like the base of his, uh, of his helmet. And just here you've got this big long U shape with sort of pointy tips, it's going to create the emblem on top of his head. Another little circle here, I'm going to put like a little dragon detail here, so a little golden dragon head that's going to go right in the centre part. On either side we're going to have these turning flats from back part of his helmets. So on a big nice square one, curving back at the top, and a little one just behind it, and then two other little curves just around the back here. It's going to be where the helmet kind of drops and you have the side plates. A little bit of a circle on the outside and some circles at the bottom. He's going to have some rope going underneath his chin, and that's going to be the rough position where that goes. So you can see the form slowly starting to build up. A little circle for the helmet bit, another little line underneath his top part of his helmet there, just kind of structure it. And we're going to build on his nose here now. So in that centre bit, and the little triangle and a little box shape coming up, just like that. And then two little sort of triangle shapes to make his fangs, and a few little circles just in between with little curved lines to create the bottom part of his teeth. Similar on the bottom, except the two bottom fangs are going to curve outwards a little bit, just to kind of show that the mouth is facing downwards. And then his eyes, I'm just going to cut in the circles a little bit, just going a little fine detail, some curves on the outside. And same just here on the side of the helmet, so I'm kind of this little kind of turn bit here, so it curves down inside those shapes, curving around. A little bit of base around the bottom of the neck to kind of build it up, you know, it's all about kind of bolding the structure out at this point. You know, because you want to look good, but you want to kind of build it up. So you can see he's going to keep refining slight details, you know, just creating layers and bits. So his side helmet's got a few different plates. They're a little bit just above the nose, some little kind of curved lines coming down to make him look a bit angry looking. You know, we're just slowly refining it. And here I'm just adding some background, so a few little arrows. And he's got a couple of sword, you know, uh, hilts on the back of his shoulders. And now I'm going to come in with fine details. So you can gently rub it out a little bit if you want and go over the fine details. So again, it's just sketching. And once you've done this, I'm going to go over the line work afterwards with a nice fine pen. But this is a kind of basic build up. So you can see everything here is I'm refined detailing it. So start with those angry looks on the nose. You know, it's got little nostrils in there. You know, making the shapes a bit more interesting. Now we have the base, we can just make it more interesting, refine it just slowly, piece by piece. So it's going from the nose, around the mouth, around the eyes. You know, making everything nice and sort of curved. You know, making everything just a bit more interesting. Like you want to make everything that little bit different to everything else. You know, don't it to look the same. So here, I'll just make those teeth a bit more menacing, a little bit more curved on the sides. A little bit of a gum bit here, so he's got his lip going around the base, curving around, and the inside bit I've got his repeating lines, just create a bit of gum on the inside. You know, so he's getting like a really nice kind of look to his face now, and it's getting the right sort of structure. You want to make sure that front part of the mouth is nice and big, the eyes are sitting just above it and not on the outside, because they feel like they're too wide apart. You know, make sure you've got a nice big mouth in there as well. The side part we sell, mate, pretty much self-explanatory, just going over what we've done. I'm putting a little bit of base detail inside the emblem part of the top of his uh, helmet. So it cuts off a little bit, just halfway through the line, a little dip on the circle. So just pulling it up section by section, that's the trick to this, you know, it's just making it the way you kind of want. You know, don't go in straight with the heavy detail. If you go in the heavy detail right to begin with, you're going to mess up. You know, like I, like I do in all my tutorials, build it up with shapes, circles, triangles, squares. And once you've got a basic build up, then like a little refined detail and just keep refining it each time. You know, don't just go like 100% perfect detail straight away, you know, build it up. You know, if you build it up, everything's going to look just right. If you don't, it's going to be a bit out of proportion here and there, and it's going to not make much sense. So the little emblem in the center, I've got this little dragon face. So it's got his nose, a little bit of his beard, like fangs on the sides. You know, just make sure they're out quite wide. The nose, uh, sort of, if you come up from the nose, you kind of get the eyes, you know, like sort of sitting on the side of it. So not lines down from the helmet and a spike on top of the helmet. You want to make sure you come up quite a bit outside that big circle we've done originally for his head as well, you know, because you want to make sure the helmet sits quite far above it. You know, if the helmet's too low down, it just won't look right. Put some little detailing in the side flaps now. So I've got a little circle, you know, um, coin bit there. I've got some rectangles curving through the second piece. And then his side plates on the side of his helmet. I've got each one's going back like a rectangle. I've got a little bit of rope just sitting behind it to show how each one's kind of joined to the one above it. A couple of circles and a bit of lines here and there kind of makes the detailing. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can have some sort of straight lines cutting through them if you want to give sort of like an overlap effect. Got some little circles going there for his uh, forehead piece. But it's all about refined detail here. Now, I'm just going to have those rope around his chin. So I'm putting some diagonal lines in here and I'm just going to refine detail go over the top. 
you know, to make it a bit more bendy. So where you've got that little curve through, just follow that through, smooth curve until you connect to the next line. You know, it's a nice repeating pattern. You get like a really guaranteed good looking rope afterwards. You know, a lot of people try doing the esque thing straight away. You know, make sure you draw like the two lines, like a rectangle sort of shape, cut lines through and then mimic around there. It just gives you a really good base to work off. I'm just putting up his neck detail here because I want to be, I kind of want to expand the detail out a little bit. And around his face now, I'm going to start in these tiger stripes. Now you can do this any how you want, you know, there's no real wrong way to do the tiger stripes. But as golden rule, I usually have it around the eyes, kind of facing around it, sort of circling around. As it goes down to the cheek, facing downwards, and as it goes to the upper part of the head, have them twist around and curve that way. You know, you can't really go wrong with that format. But like I said, it's not the only way to do tiger stripes, you know, you can play around with it, you know, customise it. Add some whiskers in there. I like to make my whiskers quite sort of chunky rather than, fit, you know, rather than just in a straight line, I like to make them a little bit chunky. Add some little details in his snout as well. Well, snout his nose. Is it a snout on the tiger? I don't think it is. What is it called? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just talking to myself here. So yeah, just keep refining the detail, going over little things. Just add little extra details on the inside, like you saw a bit here, I've had a little bit of rope on the sides. You know, a couple little sort of strap bits going around it. And once you get to this stage, you can start rubbing out the baseline work and just start refining it. And I'm going to start going over it with my pen now. So just start really like concentrating and getting it exactly the way you want it. Now that it's this stage, you can start thinking about detailing exactly how you want it to be. You know, but before this, you know, all sketch work. So see here, just building it up, getting all my nice line work over the top, making sure it's nice, clean and crisp now. You know, now that I've got a nice guideline to work over the top, I can do this. And it'd be really hard to try and achieve this before this sort of stage. And once you get to this stage, you can just rub out all that line work you've done. So all the original pencil work you don't need, you can just get rid of that. And once you're at this stage, you can start thinking about shadows and stuff. So I'm going to start with just getting these tiger straps in there. Now I do this because I know the tiger straps, I want to be jet black. You know, it's really simple. I know exactly what I want them to be. And once I've got them, it kind of gives me an idea of what to do next. So I want black around his lips, leaving little highlights through the centerpiece. A little bit of black underneath the helmet, so I know I guarantee one a shadow underneath there, so the face feels like it's inside it. A little bit of shadow on top of the nose, because I know I want that to feel a bit darker than the lower part, because the bottom part's going to be white, and the top part's going to be orange, so I want a bit more shadow there. So same on the face, I've got a bit more shadow around the face, but the lower half, I haven't got too much, because the bottom part of his face is going to be white, and the top's half orange. Get a nice bit of shadow on that top part of the helmet now. Now make sure you kind of pick off sections now, because you want bits to be lighter and bits to be darker, you don't want it to all feel the same. So like his emblem, I want to be much lighter, because I've got like a nice golden tone. And the back part of the helmet, I want to be much darker, so it really brings out that emblem. You know, really think about your darks and lights here. You know, what you want to stand out and what you don't want to stand out. So see, in the overflap, I've gone quite dark, but it's nice shadowing. But I haven't gone over the two side parts, because I want that to be, again, to be nice and gold to really stand out. Same as the little coins on top. You know, light and dark is really key for making this look, you know, the way you want it to. Just bring a bit of shadow in the back and just bring it around the swords. Just like that. Now, I haven't done a top base fix, I'm going to do that a bit differently. But just keep building up section by section, you know, and if you look golden rules now, if it sits underneath something, a bit of shadow on the inside part, you know, you can't never go wrong with that really. And a little bit of sort of down from the top, make sure you get like nice fades and stuff, you know, from here and there. You know, you don't want too many dark sections next to each other as well, so if you have quite a bit of dark in one area, try to have something contrast against it that's a bit lighter. You know, contrast is key to making something look really good. So a little bit of shadow on the road now. So most of the black and grey is pretty much done at this point. So I'm going to add this nice background bit here. So I basically cut out a circle through the centre bit. I raised those lines around the top and just got the side bits in a nice grey tone with black coming from the outside inwards. Now just to just give it, just finish this off there, just gives a really nice background effect to really come off. So now I've got this, I'm going to start in the colour. So I go, so I kind of go by colour by colour. Sometimes add a few extra bits. So I start with the emblem, so I know I want a nice golden yellow. His face, I know when want orange. So I start putting those oranges, you know, the darker orange and reds. And building up that structure. You know, the rope, I know I want the rope, this sort of blue and aqua kind of colour in rotation. The mouth, I know I want red. So go with what you 100% know you want the colours to be. And once you've got that, you can start adding the others because once you've got to that stage, you get a sense of what colours you want them to be, if that makes sense. So start off with what you know and then start going with the other stuff. You know, experiment afterwards. You know, don't sort of just pop up and colours thinking, oh, you know, this might go there, might go there. You know, just start what you know first and then that colour will come afterwards. A little bit of blue, a little bit of red just here in the overlaps. Again, I know those colours contrast nicely, so I like to put them next to each other. 
I want a few different colors in here, so I'm playing around, you know. Like if you put a color in there, try to carry it through at some other point as well. So I have red in that side bit, so I put red in the bottom bit, so it kind of carries that color through. The blue I have in the rope, I carry that through into the helmet. The blue at the top of the helmet, I kind of carry that through on the side over flaps. You know, you want to kind of color carry through a little bit. If you use it somewhere, you know, make sure you use it somewhere else. Unless it's a certain color you want to really stand out like. I'm not going to use the orange on his face, because the one out that stand out is the main focus. So that orange is only going to be on that one section. You know, I think that's really important. You know, once you get to the stage, I'm going to start focusing on the sword and stuff. So I've got a bit of black on the uh, side of the sword there. And you start adding colors in the uh, arrows and the uh, sword bits on the background. So I've got those ropes in that nice blue. Got a nice kind of aqua color. Again, from the inside rope bit, so it carries it through. A bit yellow on the eyes. Yeah, and just keep building it up until you get all the colors you want. So a bit of blue in the background, just like that. And that is it, people. That is how you draw an epic tiger samurai. I hope you like it. If you like it, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. You know, it's really important. It really does help us out with these videos. The more exposure it gets. So really, really do appreciate those people. Yeah, check out my videos. I am the Bracken Puppet, and I shall see you all next time. Peace.